Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. Now we're going to start off with ClarkMoody.com to get the market depth. If you remember I predicted a potential correction back to that $400 price. We didn't quite get it but we got very close and got a pretty big rally. We're going to get into the technicals of that rally when we get over to Bitcoin Wisdom. But Let's look at the market depth. We've got about 30,000 coins total offered. The key level I like to look at is about that 10,000 and that's around 900 price. We've got about 10,000 offered and 10,000 bid is between 5 and 550. So still significant weakening as far as number of coins offered, number of coins bid, but we have had quite a rally. So let's go look at the rally here. Now I had done a chart, a number of charts. One was based on this VNW formation. You actually have to go in very close and that was on Bitstamp. You have to remember there are multiple exchanges so you have to compare and contrast all of the volume and that's scrolled off so we have to look at the 30 minute. But You can see this V formation that we had. Of course V for victory, W for winner. That's what you see on bottoms and now we're getting a sort of correction after a run up to that 700 price. Now that's going to be a really important price because we need to examine the overhead resistance at that price. And unfortunately to make it more complicated we have to examine it by exchange. So let's do that. We'll start off with Gox and we'll go out to about the 12 hour chart here. So on Gox on the 12 hour chart you can see that at this $700 price we have worked off almost all of the volume of the selling. Just watch where the crosshairs are here. So the volume of the selling that came in on the big downdraft on the China news that overhead resistance has been worked off. The next big volume selling you can see is this last down spike. That's almost worked off. We've got this big down spike here that is still above us and the initial down spike is above us as well as the first sell off. So sitting here at that $700 price target there's still significant overhead resistance on the Mt. Gox exchange. Now Mt. Gox is decreasing and I'll show you that later when we get to market cap statistics but Mt. Gox is decreasing. Let's go over to Bitstamp. Now you can see a little bit more of a bullish picture on Bitstamp because at this $700 price we've got this big bulk of selling worked off already. This one is still above us and most of these are still above us but there's a lot of green bars a lot of buying pretty powerful spike on Bitstamp. Now BTCE has actually increased in volume there's a lot of Bitcoin trading on this exchange now and you can see the big sell-off there that's covered this sell-off is still overhead and the bulk of this sell-off is overhead but we have some big green candlesticks here so it's a fairly bullish picture I'm gonna make a guesstimate that maybe I'll give an, a 70-30 chance that this is an intermediate term bottom and that we rise from here now getting through 800 and 900 is going to be very difficult. There's going to be a lot of new buyers who got into this game and had a very very quick loss. They're always waiting overhead just to get out at even. That's just the way these markets work. So you can see when we get up to the one minute chart we're going to get some serious volatility right up here. We touched that 700 and you can see we're getting the buyers and the sellers fighting it out on Mt. Gox. Not quite as much volume. Bitstamp also same sort of thing. So 
it's really complex to try to compare all these. You have to do a lot of math. You have to look at a lot of charts to try to figure out the technicals on this. Now, the big story today is going to be the alt release of Dog E coin or Doge, the Doge coin. And you can see here, let's do a refresh on Coin Wars. And you can see on Coin Wars that we've got Doge is still sitting at the top at about 43 bucks revenue per day. Now, that is a very volatile situation. At one point, I saw it as high as $80. But you have to remember that today was the first day that it was listed on Cripsy. Now you can see the exchange listed here is Coins E. That was the first exchange to list this cryptocurrency. Today at about 12 to 1 a.m. in the morning, Cripsy offered this coin and there was a very long thread on BitcoinTalk.org. You can go over there and look at the Doge thread there were a lot of people that had mined the coin or had bought it on CoinZ that were trying to get it onto Cripsy. Cripsy has had a lot of issues as far as volume. Now I've had some struggles with positions I've had on Cripsy. It's by far in my opinion the most preferred exchange but they're having a lot of problems with new users signups and just volume problems. If you go to the top when you're logged in, I'm not logged in right now, you do have a way to square your account and do an audit. Sometimes you have to audit your account because it just doesn't catch up. There was one point today, now I went long the Dogecoin this morning and due to some technical indicators that I saw this afternoon, I dumped most of my position I bought in around 140 area and dumped off 90% at around 220 or so. But the crosses that you see here, for example, you see this 140 over on the sell side that's higher this 154 on the buy side. That's the kind of delay that you have and that's Cripsy trying to get up to speed with the craziness of these markets. So there was that issue, but now a lot of coins have made it onto the exchange and I think the selling pressure is overwhelming the buying. Temporarily, we don't know how long that's going to last. You can see there's six Bitcoins bid over here at a price of 153. We got 11 Bitcoins bid at 150. So 150 looks like a pretty good floor right now on Dogecoin and uh, Probably if you wanted to get in, you could get in fairly safely right now. Now, that is the technicals. Uh, technicals and fundamentals are two different sides of a coin, let's say. Technical analysis is based on momentum primarily. It's what the price is doing. You're making market decisions based upon price. Are you buying? My decision this morning was solely based upon a rising market. I didn't base it on the technicals. Actually, I really don't, I'm sorry, I didn't base it on the fundamentals. I really don't like the fundamentals of Doge or Dogcoin. And I'm gonna show you here why. And I'm not talking about things being pre-mined or how many coins are already out there. I'm just talking about coin distribution. You can see there's a big 100 billion potential coins to come online. So they decided to do a lot of coins. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. That could end up being a good thing because it could be very widely distributed, generate a lot of interest and a lot of people could buy it. But for me, comparing that to the 21 million market cap number uh, coins issued for Bitcoin, 84 million for Litecoin and then the various other denominations, usually in the tens to hundred millions for most coins. Doge coming in at a big 100 billion, that for me was a big fundamental warning. So 
obviously I'm watching the technicals to see if they confirm a oversold or overbought condition in this coin because I'm bearish on the fundamentals. So let's look at some of the other fundamentals just to give you an idea. Philosopher's Stone, now that's at a very high price you can see, well not a very high price but relatively speaking. It's zero, three zeros and a three but if you go and look at the coin there's only going to be eight million issued of this coin. So it's actually about a third of Bitcoin. Now digital coin is in second place and there's only 200 million to be issued of that so that's about 10 times the number of coins that Bitcoin has and on and on you'll have to go and check it yourself to see so you have to weigh those things the fundamentals now the mining of Doge is still very high you can see the profit is forty three dollars that's a calculation based on this 155 price that is a bearish pressure on this because that's an incentive to mine the coin which creates more coins to go on to the exchange so let's go over to crypto coin charts now if you remember I pointed out that they're listed in volume order so the big one here is Bitcoin US dollar Litecoin Chinese Yuan Litecoin US dollar Bitcoin Chinese Yuan those are the big markets and then Litecoin Bitcoin those are the big five we've got Bitcoin Euro we've got name coin coming in in both US dollars and bitcoins then Litecoin we've got PPC and then here we go we've got Doge coming in so that is a big debut you can see coined up did 674 Bitcoin volume in it and Cripsy came on and did 858 there are a lot more crosses on Cripsy there's a lot more people on Cripsy so it's not surprising to see a rush of people into the coin so I wanted to look at some other technical indicators to help you figure out which coins are which let's look at this list from crypto coins crypto coin charts info version 2 this is in beta now this is the crypto coin list the reason I like this is because we're looking at a daily volume for them and now Bitcoin's not going to be listed here so you can actually select which one you want to go by and you can see in graphical description here the market cap we've got Litecoin, Peercoin, Quarkcoin and there it is Doge coming in at number four now that's very very big to see that market cap jump up like that now as far as volume goes we've got Bitcoin Litecoin Namecoin Peercoin and Doge and then Quark so again that's a very very big debut that doesn't necessarily indicate a bullish situation but it's some information to use now they also have a graphical comparison and you can see this shows you in a graphical way the size of these markets and you can see that Bitcoin is the monster but it's amazing how large Litecoin is I would not think that Litecoin would would have been that big but we know from BTC China and uh, the BTC Litecoin US dollar there's a lot of interest in Litecoin so it's not that surprising to see Litecoin catching up but it is surprising to see Litecoin actually challenging Bitcoin now the ones you can't read <laughs> those are those are going to be the ones that don't matter too much right now now just because they don't matter that much right now doesn't mean they won't matter that much in the future you can barely make out Namecoin, Peercoin, Quarkcoin, Worldcoin, Zetacoin, Feathercoin, and there's Doge right there. The rest of them you can barely make out. That's the interest. Now, personally, I like playing the thinly traded ones. Let's go back over to 
cryptocurrency market cap and some of these market caps actually we want to see that on this site here when we look at market cap you can see that some of these coins have a very very tiny market cap and the volume in Bitcoin let's look at the volume in Bitcoin is very very small so some of the coins I like I'll tell you the coins that I'm in right now I like grand coin I'm into that coin you can see a tiny tiny 35 Bitcoin volume that's just ridiculous ridiculously small there are others that I like I like yak coin I was in IX coin I like alpha coin and I'm into Kruger coin these are coins that I think have potential but really nobody's in it here's Kruger coin right now and you can see all the way down here at 3.87 bitcoins and only 30,000 US dollars now what does this mean I think it's important when we go to uh, the coin market cap we know that we're under 10 billion dollars for all of these and what is the value of a cryptocurrency well the first value is going to be the speed at which it, at which it uh, changes hands how fast the blockchain clears the transaction now if you've got a number of accounts on a number of exchanges the main ones are going to be Cripsy, Vercurex, BTCE, BTER and uh, there's a couple of others ecoins I think and I've been testing these to see how much the amount of uh, commission is charged to exchange coins between the different exchanges to send them back and forth and to see how fast they go some coins go very fast some coins go very slow that's something you have to play with yourself the only way to know for sure is to do it yourself so the main point about comparing these altcoins is how are they going to function in terms of what makes a cryptocurrency valuable we've had a lot of the complaints about Bitcoin people say it has no intrinsic value well that's not true and they ask what backs Bitcoin well what backs gold what backs Bitcoin is its ability to transmit a lot of money very quickly from two points on the earth and how fast that occurs what the transaction cost is and how reliable the system that that is run upon is that is the way you determine the value of it now to the extent that these other cryptocurrencies can emulate Bitcoin's ability to do those things and of course defeating capital controls is another really important one then they will sh begin to share in some of this market cap and again this market cap is tiny we're under 10 billion dollars for all of these coins it's my belief that the coins that arrive first that are the most reliable and the ones that can be quickly exchanged are going to see a certain amount of bitcoins bleed into their market cap they're going to catch up to Bitcoin I don't know which ones that will be that's a matter for the market to sort out uh, you can go by the fundamentals of how much you like a particular coin whether it's script whether it's SHA-256 how fast it transfers how big the market cap is that's all for you to decide but it's very exciting to see what we'll call this multi-headed Hydra and if they chop one head off then 10 grow in its place it's a very exciting time for cryptocurrencies I'm gonna do some videos in the future trying to cover some of the arbitrage opportunities we do have an arbitrage screen on crypto coin charts info version 2 and there are some suggestions about potential ARB opportunities but to really do an effective arbitrage you pretty much have to have a decent amount of bitcoins and altcoins on both exchanges you have to remember to do a
successful arbitrage you have to simultaneously buy and sell the same thing at two different places at the same time if you don't do that then you're really not doing a true arbitrage you're just speculating on price direction and that's not true arbitrage so back to the Bitcoin chart we're looking for a lot of overhead resistance to be worked off and we're running into it we hit that 750 price and we got a lot of sellers people who were in at a high price trying to get out and uh, I believe we're going to do some tests now the other price point that I described is going to be that very very important $800 price and that's because the $800 price is going to be marking this downtrend here I don't have a diagonal line that I can use here I don't have a trend line but if you draw the line down from this top right here and draw it through this touch point and through this touch point you get this $800 price a penetration through the $800 price will be a bullish breakout through the trend line and through significant overhead resistance I'm looking for a move through 800 to confirm that we are actually going to go and test 1250 and we'll talk to you next time